What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back to Talking Mets It, Rob. How is everybody doing? Before I get started talking about the Mets being close to a trade for a closer, don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, you guys know what to do. Hit on that subscribe button, everybody. All right, guys. So after the devastating news of Edwin Diaz having season ending knee surgery all speculation was are the Mets going to trade for a closer to replace Edwin Diaz for the 2023 season and then it came out that more and more players more and more closers names have started to pop up in connection with the New York Mets couple of guys that we we've heard of we all heard of about Alexis Diaz the brother of Edwin Diaz for the Cincinnati Reds. That was the major talking point since the injury to Edwin Diaz, and ex ex exception when the news came out about Edwin Diaz needing season-ending surgery. That was the first name that came up was Alexis Diaz. Oh, what a storybook ending it would be that his brother would replace him, Edwin Diaz, to be the Mets closer and. That is something that would be perfect and a perfect storyline for many, many people if that would be the case. But there is other closes out there that the Mets could trade for. And are the Mets looking hard to replace Edwin Diaz for at least this year in the trade market? They do have internal options. As we know, David Robertson, Adam Adovino, those are two guys that are likely internal options to close for the New York Mets in the 2023 season, but are they dominant? Are they good enough to have that closer role to get the Mets to the promised land? And what is that? That is contending for a World Series, and that's where you have to focus. Are they good enough to put the New York Mets over the top? Are you confident in David Robertson? Are you confident in Adam Adovino to be a closer in the ninth inning when big games are happening? We know David Robertson in the past, especially in New York with the New York Yankees. He shows he can do it, but at his older age, can he still be good enough to have everybody confident, not just fans, but Buck Showalter has the confidence in Showalter to put him out there in the ninth inning? Or is it Adam Anavino, who had a career year last year with the New York Mets, is he going to get the option of being the closer for the ninth inning? But the trade options for the New York Mets. We are going to start off with Daniel Bard of the Colorado Rockies. He is a guy that a lot of people were talking about as well because of the fact he's getting a decent contract. Colorado Rockies are going nowhere fast. And the Mets could look to take him away from the Rockies for a decent deal. I don't think it's going to be a major prospect because you will be taking on that money, which you'll be making $19 million over the next two years. And, of course, the Rockies would love to take that off the books, considering they signed Chris Bryant last offseason. And that is a lot of money on their books. And I don't think they realize, I don't think they're going to think that they're going to be contenders in the NL West when you got the Padres and the Dodgers in that division. So the Mets could be looking at Daniel Bard for a possible trade partner to get Daniel Bard to the New York Mets and be the closer for at least for the 2023 season. And you also got Daniel Bard for one more season after that at $9.5 million for each of the two years remaining on that contract. That is an option you can look at because he'll probably be the least expensive when it comes to prospects that would have to go back in a package for Daniel Bard. That is number one, and he had a very good season in 2022 in all places in Colorado, which we know pitchers are there to die when it comes to stats. And, I mean, he had a great year. Just look at the 2022 season for Bard. He had a 3.8 war, 6-4 and four record, 1.79 ERA in 57 games with 34 saves for a Rockies club that wasn't very good, 60 in the third innings, and 69 strikeouts in 57 games with 60 in the third innings with a 0 0.994 whip. That is an excellent year for now to be a 38-year-old closer 
in in Colorado, where we know pitcher stats can be extremely inflated on the pitcher's side because of the fact it is Colorado with the thin air. Offensive is through the roof in Colorado. Offensive numbers are through the roof. To have a 1.79 ERA, have 34 saves on a bad team in Colorado, that is something that the Mets should truly look at if they're going the trade market route. And I do think they are going to be on the trade market route prior to opening day, which is about 10 days away. And also during the season, if it's not working out with Robertson or Adovino or anybody else that might be in the Mets bullpen that might get the opportunity to close for the New York Mets, the Mets might have to make that deal and trade for Daniel Bard. That is closer number one that could be on the eyes of the Mets for a trade scenario with the Colorado Rockies, and that is Daniel Bard. Number two on the list, we're going to go to Pittsburgh Pirates, and that is David Bednar. He is another guy that is a very good closer, a guy who has multiple years of control still, isn't a free agent for a couple more years, is extremely cheap, so that is going to cost more prospect-wise. And we know in recent past, especially with Billy Epler, the New York Mets aren't willing to give top prospects for trade packages for anybody for that matter. But are they willing to do it? Are they going to be desperate enough to give up a trade package, a couple of prospects for a guy like David Bednar of the Pittsburgh Pirates. We know Pittsburgh is always willing to trade guys that have value, and sometimes they always get snuffed in those trades because of the fact that Pittsburgh always seems like they make those trades when they got stars on their team. They trade them, and what they get back is nothing of significance or don't would be significant, but ended up being prospects that never really turn out. Who knows if that's the case, but are the Mets willing to give prospects at this point, even with the internal options they might have, to get Bednar? And he's another one that had a really good year last year for a very, very bad team in the Pittsburgh Pirates. So looking at David Bednar and his 2022 stats, he had a 1.3 war, 3-4 and four record with a 2.61 ERA. Anytime you get a closer that has an under a 3 ERA, I always think it is always worth the possibility of looking to trade or sign a closer with that type of ERA. In 45 games, he had 19 saves in 51 and two-thirds in and 69 strikeouts with a 1.123 whip. That is a very good season. It's very hard to look at the saves because it's obviously known that the Pirates probably didn't give him a lot of opportunities to save games and give him a lead going into the ninth inning. In only 45 games, so that means the opportunities were even rare for the Pittsburgh Pirates because they really were a bad team. But will the Mets look at David Bednar of the Pittsburgh Pirates? He will cost probably a decent amount of prospects going to the Pittsburgh Pirates. What would that be? Who knows? But at that point, will the Mets be desperate enough, especially if it's during the season early on, if the Mets are struggling to find that everyday closer in the ninth inning if it's not internal and they're struggling to save games in April and May. Can David Bednar be that option? Absolutely, guys. And David Bednar is a very good closer, and I think it changes scenery, a better team, giving him opportunities to save games in the ninth inning will only increase his numbers, his saves, his strikeouts, his innings, his ERA will probably even be better, and that's something that David Benar could be an option for the New York Mets. What would it take? It would definitely be more than Daniel Bard of the Colorado Rockies because he's controllable, he's cheap, and he's good. That is always warranting a couple of prospects going back in a package. So at the moment, Daniel Bard is an option. David Benar is an option for the Rockies and from the Pittsburgh Pirates. But last but not least, and we've talked about this earlier when it came to the first person that every Met fan, every baseball enthusiast thought of when Diaz got hurt was his brother Alexis Diaz. We found out later after the Diaz injury that the New York Mets actually called up the Cincinnati Reds about Alexis Diaz last, off, last trade deadline in 2022 to try to acquire a bullpen arm because they were struggling in the bullpen enough where they wanted to get a dominant pitcher in that bullpen. But the 
the price was extremely high and the Mets weren't willing to give that price to acquire Alexis Diaz in 2022. Now that we heard that, could they ramp up discussions again for Alexis Diaz? It always seems like that storybook onion where, hey, you can bring in your brother to replace your brother. And then when Edwin comes back, now you got the two brothers connection. And that's something that the that would be really cool to see. But is it possible? Will the Mets be willing or even desperate at some point during the year? If ninth inning is a problem closer-wise, would they be willing to do that? Will they revamp those discussions with the Cincinnati Reds? The problem is, once again, Alexis Diaz. Last year was his first year. He's not even arbitration eligible yet. He is extremely cheap and very controllable, and there's not a lot of incentive for the Cincinnati Reds to trade him unless they get back a whole back in a trade package from the New York Mets. But will the Mets be willing to do it because of the fact they really want that dominant pitcher in the ninth that they can trust every time you give him the ball with the lead in the ninth inning in a save opportunity? Would Alexis Diaz? Be that option. We all know that Edwin Diaz talked about how cool it would be to have his brother wearing a Mets uniform, pitching beside him in the bullpen. But can the Mets do it? Will the Mets do it? Will Billy Epler finally get rid of that grasp he has on his prospects and pat it himself on the back like he did in 2022 after the trade deadline when he said, I am very happy we did not give up any of our top 25 prospects in a trade to acquire certain people, that players that we were looking at at the trade deadline. When he said that, that showed me that he wasn't absolutely all in. And obviously, we saw what we got at the deadline last year, and it wasn't good enough, obviously. But will he have a different thought process because of the fact that you got older pitches at the top of your rotation? You don't got much time with those guys. Steve Cohen put a window of three to five years to win a World Series. We are year three of this right now. Is there pressure on Billy Epler? Is Steve Cohen putting pressure on Billy Epler to make a deal for Alexis Diaz or one of the three closers that we mentioned? That is yet to be found out. But I do think they will be discussing trade situations, trading for a closer, because I don't know how much they can trust David Robertson, or even Adam Adovino, or anybody else in that bullpen to give them confidence in the ninth inning to save bullpens for the New York Mets. Will they get opportunities? Probably. But these guys, Daniel Bart, David Bednar, and Alexis Diaz, are guys that are all better than David Robinson that could probably ever be in the ninth inning. And that is something that the New York Mets have to look at. And going back to Alexis Diaz, we're going to look at his numbers in 2022. Outstanding as a rookie for the Cincinnati Reds. 3.1 war, 7-3 record, 1.84 ERA in a band box in Cincinnati. 59 games, 10 saves, 63 and two-thirds innings, 83 strikeouts with a 0.958 war. And you're going to say, wow, that's not a lot of saves. Well, it's the Cincinnati Reds. Not a lot of opportunities, not a lot of chances to save ball games when you're playing for a terrible team in the Cincinnati Reds. And he was in 59 games. But a, under a two ERA in a band box of a ballpark in Cincinnati, that is something that you can always see translate to City Field, a bigger ballpark, more room to get opportunities to save ball games. With his brother, you know he's going to be all in. That is something that I would love to have. But he will cost the most out of these three guys, Bard and Bernard. Diaz is the guy to get. But will Billy Epler and the Mets be willing to give top prospects and a trade package to the Cincinnati Reds to acquire Alexis Diaz? Will they start those conversations again that they had last year with the Cincinnati Reds? Did that price go down? Maybe. Are uh, the Cincinnati Reds really know that in a, are they going to be comp- uh, in contention in the next couple of years while they have a cheap, controllable closer on their hands? Or they're willing to get a couple of prospects for Diaz because they know they got, they're a couple of years away to either starting to contend for that division title in the Central 
or even aspirations of a World Series. That is something the Mets really have to look at, and I do think the Mets are looking on the trade market for a closer, even though internally and on in interviews, they are saying that they have internal options like Dave Robinson, Adam Adovino. Of course, they're going to say that because they don't want to. They don't want to show their hand and be and act like they're desperate for a closer in the ninth inning. So, question for you guys: Who would you want to be the closer in the ninth inning if the Mets go the trade market route? David Bednar, Daniel Bard, or Alexis Diaz? And keep in mind. The trade package that will go along with it with each one of those guys. Are you willing to give a big trade package for the best available guy or a guy who is still dominant, but it will cost less? It is up to you guys. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you think the Mets should go after. One of those guys, Diaz, Bednar, and Bart. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. Once again, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos, and when I go live, you guys know what to do. Hit on that subscribe button, everybody. Once again, guys, let me know in the comments what you think of these three closers and which one would you want. And keep in mind the trade package that would have to go to each one of those guys. Let me know in the comments, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. And as always, Mets fans, let's go Mets.